the July update has dropped. Sorry, I was out of town for a while and couldn't cover it immediately. This update is packed with information and it is by far the most information that we were given in the monthly developer updates. I'll go over everything in this video. There's a lot of information to process, so let's not waste any time and dive into the July update. As I stated in my Everything We Know So Far video, the game will be playable on the upcoming games convention Gamescom in August. Even earlier than that, there will be a gameplay trailer which will come out on the 2nd of August. Many Titan Quest fans, including me, have been waiting for some gameplay videos, but we only got screenshots and some GIFs, so this is a big deal and I can't wait to see the gameplay trailer. This month's update title is The Road to Gameplay. The developers reaffirm us by saying that the gameplay of Titan Quest 2 will be deeply rooted in what the original Titan Quest offered. As a dude who loves Titan Quest 1, I can approve of this. The next piece of information is this. Level ups award active skills, passive skills and attribute points. Attributes and their connected secondary attributes determine what gear you can wear and they scale your damage and other stats. At certain thresholds they also unlock skill modifiers that are always active in the background. This is a big deal. In Titan Quest 1 you got two stat points per level up and this was very one dimensional because you could allocate these to strength, dexterity or intelligence. In Titan Quest 2 this stat point system will be more elaborate. A little later in the devlog the devs go into a lot of detail with the stat point system and let me tell you it sounds good and a fresh idea for an ARPG. So there are three offensive character attributes, a supporting defensive attribute and three secondary attributes. That's a lot to take in. Let me start with the three offensive attributes. First up there's Might. Good for powerful aggressive styles using heavy armor and weapons. Unlocks damage related skill modifiers. This will obviously be the choice for melee heroes, but it might be also for some hybrid builds. The next one is Knowledge. A more tactical minded perfectionist or scholarly style. Unlocks scale or utility related skill modifiers. It's not clear what to make of this. It might be a stat required to unlock some items. The third offensive attribute is Agility. Suited for characters with quick eyes and reflexes, who like to outplay their opponents. Unlocks speed related skill modifiers. This will undoubtedly be an important attribute for ranged heroes, but also for assassin type heroes. The supporting defensive attribute is Vigor governs health and tenacity as well as overall capability. Sometimes it's enough to be tough. This one will be used by tank type builds and I can foresee that it will be required to have this attribute for very heavy armor. Now we come to the secondary attributes. These are a combination of the primary attributes that I mentioned. It is not described how the secondary attributes are unlocked, but it is my speculation that when you invest a certain amount of skill points in the primary attributes, the combination of the skill point allocation determines your level in the secondary attributes, because they are a combination of the four primary attributes. I won't read out the three secondary attributes, they are suited for either a caster, assassin, ranged or melee tank hero. The devlog goes on in a very interesting paragraph where the developers describe how the player's allocation of skill points and their combination unlock certain gear. The stat point system with the secondary attributes is something that was never seen before in this way and it seems like it offers a huge amount of variety and possible build combinations. 
the stat point system in Titan Quest 1 was bland, in other words, a bit one dimensional. You would either have a melee, ranged, or sorcerer hero, and thus focusing on either strength, dexterity, or intelligence made sense to scale the hero's damage, with the exception of hybrid heroes. It is very possible that Titan Quest 2 wants to improve on the stat point system as well. The primary and secondary attribute point system will offer another layer of customization, which is very welcome by me. The next part of the devlog explains a bit how the items are going to be in Titan Quest 2. It starts with enumerating all the available equipment types. These are pretty standard for an ARPG, with weapons like swords, axes, spears, shields, staves and bows. Maces are missing here, but we saw those already in screenshots, so I'm sure the devs forgot to mention them. Titan Quest 1 also had throwing weapons like axes and knives, which were added in the Ragnarok DLC. They probably won't be included in Titan Quest 2. The devlog continues with going through the different types of armor, which is also super standard for ARPGs. With one exception, shoulder guards, capes are mentioned. We didn't have those in Titan Quest 1, and most other role-playing games that I have played did not have them. I like that addition. Of course, two rings and an amulet slot will be there, which is standard since Diablo 1. There will be health and energy potions, but you won't have to pick them up and stack them in the inventory because later it is explained that potions refill themselves by dealing damage. Potions with affixes can be found too, which is the same as in Path of Exile, where you could equip health or mana flasks with pre and suffix bonuses. I love that addition. It's tedious to teleport back to town when you have run out of potions. It is also great to have another layer of equipping good bonuses for your build by using just the health and energy potions. We don't only get the stat point system and the item types explained, but also the rarity. These rarity types will be in Titan Quest 2. Common, which is the normal type that you use only at the very start of the game. These items don't have any affixes. Magic is the next category. Those will have one to two affixes. The next category, rare, is getting interesting because it has three to four affixes. That means you can have two prefixes and two suffixes, which is awesome. Imagine you have a perfect item that has the perfect two prefixes and the two perfect suffixes for your build. Reading the next type of rarity made me so happy. Infrequent. This was a big part of Titan Quest 1, where they were called Monster Infrequent, or MI items. I am sure now that at least some developers of Grimlaw games are Titan Quest 1 fans. Infrequent items were items that a specific monster type dropped. Those items had an inherent set of stats, but also random pre and suffixes. You could get lucky and get incredibly powerful MI items in Titan Quest 1, because the items were already strong with the inherent stat, and by rolling the perfect pre and suffixes, you got incredibly powerful items. The next type of rarity was already a given from the start. It is called Unique. An awesome name for that category. I recall my Diablo 1 and 2 days, where the highest grade of special items were also called Unique. These items might grant special abilities or have very good stats that sometimes make entire hero builds around them possible. I can't wait for the game after reading this. Collecting items and farming for the right bonuses for a specific build and crafting different hero builds was what made Titan Quest so interesting for me and what kept me playing the game for a long time.
I even have a big collection of monster and frequent items. The log continues with giving a little more info about the item looks. Depending on which area you are, the items will look differently. It will be even possible to stitch together different weapon parts to go for some visual variety. I love that cosmetic option. In this screenshot we get a glimpse of how some lower grade weapons will look like. The weapons look very good and are of high detail. They also look very realistic, if you can say that when looking at a staff. The unique items look fancier of course, and the devs also show some of those. I like that the weapons still look somewhat realistic, but also have a legendary look. Take the sword for example, some parts of the edge are serrated. I wouldn't be surprised if it gave some bleeding damage bonus. Being a one-handed sword, it might have an attack speed bonus as well. The next bomb that the developers drop is this. You can buy item space. Not with real life money, but with gold found in game. How awesome is that? No more need for third party software like it was the case in Titan Quest 1. Here you needed TQ Vault to store the items due to very limited space. Many people also used so called mule characters. Those existed only to carry items in their inventory. This was very tedious. I love that we have that option now. There will be no limit to how many chests you have. This is awesome as a money sink. I would have loved that in Titan Quest 1, because there I had an excess of gold with every hero I played. I already love that the developers don't ask players to pay real money for the item space. This would be a huge disappointment. It seems Grimlaw Games are guys who are gamers themselves. They probably look only at the perspective on how the game will be the most entertaining and the least frustrating for the gamers. Let's talk about the other screenshots. There was a hidden screenshot that you only saw a part of when you clicked on the link of the article. In full it looks like this. Here we see a first battle scene and wouldn't you know it, it shows another monster type. Other humans. We see some dudes slain and blood splattered on the ground. The hero in this picture is a female sword and shield hero with shining armor. The scene looks very dynamic with different enemy types, archers, brutes, a berserker, some hunters with spears and also an enemy commander. It looks like he is pointing as if he is giving out orders, which looks awesome and incredibly realistic. We never had this much of fights going on in a screenshot. A couple of times they came close, but not like here. Another thing is the octopus in the loot stacks, surrounded by flies. It looks fun. The next screenshot also looks fantastic. This time it's not in-game graphics, but concept art of male and female heroes. The male hero carries heavy equipment. The armor looks like a set, because helmet, torso, shield and leg guards have the same color pattern. The shield might be a part of this set too. The set is missing some braces. I recommend some stonebinders cuffs. The male hero also carries a mace, which again confirms that this weapon type will also be a part of the game. The female hero looks really good. She also had time to apply mascara before battle. You never know, maybe after the fighting is over, there might be a cute hero around. You got to look your best. Jokes aside, she looks great. I can picture a female fighter more in the assassin or rogue fighter role, with hit and run or cutthroat tactics, which suit women better than the brute force strategy. 
She is also in full armor and she wields dual daggers. I like the art style and can't wait to see how that will look in game. The next screenshot shows the toga, which is the basic garment that the hero wears under the armor. I think it will be possible to buy colors for the clothes from merchants to make your toga look good with your armor. This was the case in Titan Wars 1 as well. Speaking about cosmetics and customization, we saw a bearded guy in this gif. Maybe you have the option to customize your hero's face, which would be absolutely awesome. Without having played any title of Grimlaw games, I am already a fan. Probably the fact that they will include MI items sealed the deal for me. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Let me know your opinion about the upcoming game in the comments. If I missed something important, please let me know. I am no know-it-all and I always welcome constructive criticism or hints that I explained something incorrectly. Then I can set it right. Maybe I can make it to Cologne on August 21st, when Gamescom will take place. Then I can play Tidal Quest 2 first hand. Leave a sub, like and comment to help me out and see you in the next one. Bye.